Hello and welcome to Inside Intercom. My name is Ruth O'Brien and I am the Director of Automated and Proactive Support here at Intercom. Joining me today is Noel O'Reilly from HubSpot, who is the Director of Customer Support for the EMEA Group. So welcome, Noel. Great Thanks. to have you here. Thanks very much, Ruth. Excited to be here. Excited to, uh, to have a chat today, yeah. Okay, let's dig in and just talk about all things AI and automation, big topic in the world of customer service. So um, how do you think AI and automation is affecting customer service today and what are your thoughts for the future? Massive question. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's start on the big one. Um, so I think th there's, there's a, clearly a, an enormous movement around AI. And I think, you know, one of the big impacts is it's probably occupying about 80% of all meeting space right now. Every meeting is like AI, AI. But in real terms, I think um, the, the future of support teams is, in my mind, a combination of this AI-led automation with a very deep human touch. Now, I know a lot of talk right now is, is, is around like AI is, you know, replacing us, replacing our jobs, that kind of thing. But I honestly see, you know, a concentration of where the human touch is involved has been key to success. And there are tasks that AI can and will automate. That's terrific. A lot of those repetitive tasks that most of us don't really enjoy doing. But I think where we can really win and concentrate on the human-led part are in areas like complexity or just really great conversations um, or even, you know, building a business through human-led interaction as well. So I, like I'm personally really excited by all the conversations that are happening in lots of different companies around the world. Um, I think there's a lot of nerves around as well. And um, I think there's a lot of opportunity around. So it's really, it just feels like we're at the edge of something really, really big. So where we're going to end up, well, who, who knows, right? But that's the exciting part, I think. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just thrilled that like in roles like we're in, we're in a position where we can see this, we can have an opinion, we can influence um, and learn enormous amounts along the way. Because I don't know about you, but like two years ago, I didn't know very much about AI. So every day you're trying to ramp up that skill set as well. Yeah, it's interesting how it's changed from, um, like, like you said, automating some tasks and figuring out some way of, you know, routing the right thing to the right person. And that mm -hmm. would have been automation to us maybe like two years ago. Yeah. And now it's full on, you know, having AI answers like upfront so many questions for, yeah. for customers. So it's incredible to see even how far it's come just since like not even this time last year, right? It's not even a year since the biggest changes yeah. came about. Not, not, not even a year. And it just feels like every, you know, every uh, meeting or, or every interaction, there's something new and something slightly different happening with AI. And maybe that's part of the challenge, right? Is that because there's so much going on, it's okay, like, where do we focus? Where is the right place to spend our energy? Again, though, it's just another question around how do we make AI and uh, really successful in our business and how do we embed it in our business as well? So yeah, a long way in a year, it's going to be interesting to see just like, where, as I said, where it brings us in, in, in the years ahead. Yeah, it's interesting what you said about, you know, people being afraid of AI taking jobs. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, worldwide, there probably is some risk there. We were chatting about it before we started yeah. recording, right, about the different industries it's involved in. But for customer service and customer support teams, really, like I can genuinely see such a positive application of it because, before we started using our own product, Finn, we were super busy. We are still super busy, but mm -hmm. like, you know, behind in our SLAs and Finn, our product, like enabling us actually answer more customer questions. It's actually yeah. helping our team just even stay afloat. Right. So sure. that piece around like, you know, all team is going to lose so many jobs. Like that's like not where I see it today. Yeah. Um, there probably are some teams where like the kind of more transaction based support is going to be whittled down, but that'll open new opportunities, like we were saying earlier, Yeah, yeah. Um, for different types of roles. That's exactly how I see it. And, and it's great that Finn, by the way, has a sense of humor as well. I love some of some of the interactions that folks have with Finn. But yeah, I, I think I think we're agreed there that I see it in the same way that if we can automate certain tasks, it just creates space for people to do even better, even deeper work. Um, you know, um, Yamini, our own CEO, has spoken a lot about the, the connection with the customer. Yeah. So imagine creating space where we can spend more time connecting with the customer and not just doing this rote work. That That's a terrific opportunity for us, but also for our customers to get like really deep connection with folks who know the suite of tools really, really well. 
So, so yes to like automating those tasks that we don't want to do. And also yes to creating space to go much deeper in lots of other areas, as I said, like whether it's just complexity or whether it's connection or whether it's conversations that people want to have. Um, I think that's where we're really going to like AI would clear space for us to get deeply involved in that kind of work. Yeah, I'm sure your team experiences the same thing where, you know, there's a massive queue, it's super busy and the success metrics, like classic success mm -hmm. metrics for support are to like just move through as many bodies of work as like help as many customers as possible yeah. with the question they've asked. And I'm hoping that AI will enable like our support humans to slow down and be a bit more proactive. You know, yeah. they'll be able to check like, oh, you haven't activated this feature yet. Or like, what are you actually trying to do rather than yeah. just answer just a straight up question in front of them? Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, you hit on an important point there. It's like, you know, maybe the activating part of the tool or activating a feature, like e terrific to have the time and the space yeah. to have that conversation. Deflection used to be a bit of a dirty word, right? Yeah. If you went down that road of, oh, I want to try and deflect, it was like, we didn't want to look after that customer. Yes, yeah. But it's changed a little now because now we're deflecting things that we really know we can and we should deflect. And customers are really happy for us to deflect, whether it's to a KB or, you know, some other some other source of help. Customers are going, great, that's really quick. It's really efficient. I'm all up for that. And again, I come back to that point of that then creates the space for that deeper conversation where humans are needed. And I mean, I think everyone's a winner there because customers um, our support staff and um, they, they're, they're just engaging in work that's, again, really meaningful and additive. Um, and it also, you know, if we if we think about what it means for a support rep, the skills that they're going to learn and um, skills that are going to be enhanced in the, in, in the years ahead, I think are ones that are really going to help build a career as well. And um, so I love that aspect of it, that we're going to create you know, a, an environment, I guess, where that growth is part of the opportunity as well. Yeah, that's something that's, I mean, it's really cool for our support team right now because, you know, we are so involved in mm -hmm. implementing AI. There's a lot of pressure that goes with needing to use our own tools to support our customers. Um, we have to make it look really good, cool. right? Um, and we have to adopt it quickly. So there's that level of pressure there. But at the same time, it means that we are mm -hmm. at the front of like pretty cutting edge technology. Yeah. So for our support reps at the moment, you know, they're helping customers set up their entire automation strategy. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing thing for um, support reps to be able to say when they move forward in their careers, yeah. that that's like something they've literally helped customers do. And they've helped us, you know, test it, implement it. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a space that like, I know when I was a customer support rep, a few years ago, I never would have dreamed of that being the kind of thing yeah. that I could say after, you know, um, after being involved in some like software support. Yeah. So it's so cool. It, it, it really is. And I think the, you know, the future world where the competencies that we might look for in, in our support staff might be a little bit different and um, we'll still look for all that great and um, all those great soft skills that like are so, so important. But I, but I really love the idea, like you just explained there, of folks being like deeply embedded early on from the rollout, to, you know, maybe helping in some of the design, the troubleshooting, making it live, like then like when it's out there in the open, in the wild, like figuring out, okay, what works and what doesn't work for your interactions with their customers. And I think customers, again, are really up for that. They, they want to help us make these tools and these resources better. And um, so again, a great kind of a, a great mixture, I think, of folks coming to it with, with the right intent, customer support crew, and then, you know, the role that AI might play in that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the adoption of it is kind of slow. You know, I'm, I am a customer of many mm -hmm. companies, right? Yeah. And still, when I go to a website and open a messenger, depending on what my messenger is, depending on what the bot is set up is like, you know, I can have the biggest, I can just be like, no, I don't yeah. want to deal with this bot, you know, and my job is to, <laughs> to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's not implemented right, you know, or implemented well, it's it's an absolute pain. But just generally, like I, I've seen from being a customer um, that companies are slow to adopt this. Like, why mm -hmm. do you think that is? I, th I think there's a multitude of reasons. Um, and you know, when I think about this, like a bit like yourself, my own personal experience, I, I had a, I had a, I was interacting with a, a well-known um, seller of tickets online recently, and I was, um, I was jumping across two different location sites, yeah, know, and I was trying to get help, and it was so difficult to like get to a human, which is what I wanted, yeah. What I did find out eventually is that all the answers I needed were there via the bot, yes, right? Yeah. So like, you know, similar to you, I was kind of challenging myself to say, why did I not just go down that road? So, so in answer to your question, I think fear is part of it, right? And, um, you know, 
many years ago when people started texting, like I was like, I don't know what that will catch on. How will that catch on? Yeah. You know, it's like, why would people do, do that? So there's a little bit of like what fear or like, what's the be what's the user case for this? But then when you see the benefits and slowly start to see benefits, it's, it's like this, like, you know, it starts to gather momentum, that snowball effect. So I think fear is one piece of it. I think within companies, um, cost is clearly a part of it. Like, let's, let's call it as it is. It's definitely, you know, a reason that some companies might go, you know, we don't have that investment ready right now. We weren't expecting this. And um, I also think within companies, there's often a gap in just the knowledge that's needed to implement. And everybody has like terrific ideas, maybe even have an idea of what it should look like at the end. But that middle part, but how do we design this, get it up and running, get it in front of our customers? That's not always there. And I think, you know, there, there, there's probably a need for a lot of companies to catch up and to like educate a bunch of folks around A, what the possibilities are, but also how to implement and implement quickly and implement via pilots, iterate, you know, and then scale out as well. Um, I think, you know, if we go a little bit deeper and maybe why it hasn't caught on really quickly, look, there's there's a there's, there's also a wider sense of fear around data, um, incorrect answers, hallucinations, like what a, what a great word, but but you know, that kind of thing I think might hold people back too. And I think maybe the final point on on why it's not like um implemented quickly is is that it's all happened so quickly. Like we're very sure that AI is the future. There's probably a thinking of what if we put all our eggs into this basket and we're wrong. So a little bit of holding back and seeing who, who kind of leads the charge there. But said at the beginning, I honestly, right now, I've no doubt that the, the future is that combination of AI led automation and the human touch. And I think, you know, going down that road is a path for, for success. So lots of reasons to be fearful, I think, but also I think there's lots of reasons to be excited for it too. Yeah. Yeah. Even when I think about our own implementation, like I said, of our own tools, you know, mm -hmm. there's that pressure piece to make it look good and we have yeah. to be using it now, which is the right thing. Um, but also the speed at which we're doing it now at Intercom because of that, right? Because we yeah. build these products, our support team must be using them. Yeah. Um, but I just think back to even like a year ago, uh, being asked to take on, you know, our automation strategy mm -hmm. and then obviously like start taking on more like AI pieces to that too. Um, like... I was a deer in headlights, you yes, know, I course. really didn't have a clue. And seeing how far, like, I mean, you need to pull in like lots of people. I have like a great team working sure. with me and uh, we figured it out together, you know, but we've even built these new roles that didn't exist a year ago. Mm -hmm. We've hired our first conversation designer. Um, I think that existed in the industry, right? But we didn't have one here. Yeah. Um, and that person is in charge of our like end to end automation journeys for our customers. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like you do need to have the, the skill sets being yeah. fostered within the team because no one person can just come in and just like wave a magic wand and make it happen. Precisely. And I think like your your own journey there is like a great example of like a couple of years ago, yeah. this was not within your wheelhouse or yeah. skills and you're constantly like learning and, you know, upskilling and you said pulling in the right people and things like that. And I think like it's just a great example of, um, you know, again, to the, to the what we spoke about earlier and some of the fears that like, you couldn't have plotted that two years ago, and but but yet you need people around you, yourself included, with that skill set around ambiguity, around like change management, like learning new skills, all that. You're managing the complexity of it as well, and I think um, that's you know it, it's 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 an unknown, but it's, it ends up being really really exciting in the end. It's just terrific opportunities to do something new and something different. Yeah, it is. I mean, again, it's really cool, you know, for. My whole career has been very much like frontline mm -hmm. human support, you know, so yeah. even for myself and my own career, this is such a step like to the side that yeah. I never expected. And similar for people on my team now, like this is kind of a move in a direction they mm -hmm. may never have planned at all, you know. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a bit about what you're doing at HubSpot, obviously, like within the realms of whatever you can share, but how are you working uh, with AI and automation yeah, on your yeah. support team? Like what benefits have you seen? Like where do you think that you want to invest more? So, yeah, I think... Um, you know, I, I don't think I'm, I'm selling any secrets when I, you know, our, our policy is probably like embrace the chatbot. Like, like there's just such a terrific opportunity there. And I think with with something like that, you can 
experiment and iterate really, really quickly and figure out what works, right? So I think for us, there's there's a big part of like, we, we want um, AI to be embedded really in all aspects of the, of the customer journey. And we see multiple opportunities for that. And again, we see multiple opportunities to balance it with the human um, the human aspect. So whether it's like, um, you know, quickly, much more quickly and routing folks to the right resource, to say with simple queries, great. AI has an enormous part to play there. It can also educate us on what customers are looking for, right? So we can continuously iterate, build and rebuild on those tools as well. I think from, um, from a perspective of it, tools that, that really enhance the, the customer experience, I think we, you know, we're going to, we're going to go down a road. We're going to end up seeing like enhanced, um, personalization. Like that's going to be absolutely key to future success. And I think if I was a customer anywhere, that would really appeal to me as well. Like that this company knows what I want and what I need, but again, that can be brought so far with AI and then we can, you know, have that human intervention as well. So for me, like, like we're using AI in lots of different places, like our customers, are used to some of the old school versions of it, right? I think, you know, we chatted about before about like, you know, what what it meant a couple of years ago is very different to what it means now. But all that is pretty, pretty well integrated into a bunch of different touch points for our customers that are they're very at ease with like interacting with our different versions of AI. And then in the background, we're, we're working away trying to make it better and understand it better, to put it in the right places all the time. But ultimately, to make sure that it's not a friction point for our customers. What, what we don't want to do is create a world where, you know, there's all these layers of AI before you get to the, the, the humans in, in HubSpot. And um, it's not what we want to do. We want to make sure that there's great options for our customers, but there's also a very clear pathway to talk to humans too. And, you know, we're working on that blend all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important to have a way out, right. And not mm -hmm. be caught in like an yeah. endless, endless loop of bot hell that sure. can happen. Yeah. yeah, And it does happen, right. Yeah. It's, it's not uncommon. And I think there's a reason why, you know, really good companies don't want to end up there in that, yes. in that bot hell, because like, it's such an awful experience. Um, and sometimes you just need that hand coming down and, and helping you. Right. Yeah. And I spoke earlier about connection. That's where that really, really matters. You know, you can, you maintain that connection, drive that conversation, work on complexity so that, you know, that that's, I guess, where, you know, we're like a lot of companies are still figuring out what's that line between like where AI can really be a plus plus benefit to oh, actually ugh, kind of getting in the way now. We need we need some a person in here helping us out. So continuing to look into that and just trying to figure the best versions of that. Yeah, it is that piece where like for customers to want to interact with bots, you know, they need to mm -hmm. have had, I don't know, what is it? How many positive interactions do you yeah. need to have to negate a negative one that yeah. you've had? Yeah. And yeah. so many of us have gone on, like we said, like gone onto those websites, been caught in like terrible bot flows, yeah. can't get through to a human. Uh, whereas if the bot flow had been, you know, good and set up well, often we're going to be helped yeah, like immediately yeah, instead yeah. of waiting in a queue for a human. So like, that's like when it goes well. Yeah. I, I had an experience, I named a company recently where uh, it was interacting with a bot what wasn't going well the bot said hey you know contact please ring our office now it was kind of like right now and okay so ring the office the office was closed great rang the office the following day and they were saying oh why didn't you ring us when this happened <laughs> oh. my word like this this is worse than bot hell it's bot and human hell combined but that kind of experience like you know if we can do away with that <laughs> Like that's terrific. Um, and I think if we can just, if we can get the balance right, it's even better, right? So getting that balance right between where people want to be or are comfortable with AI and where they need that, that additional help. Yeah. Um, have you seen what you're doing with automation? Like has it improved things like your SLAs or your coverage hours, anything like that? I think where we're seeing the biggest improvement is probably in our ability to answer questions for customers. So up to this point, not necessarily with our with our SLAs, um, but I do think there's a world where that's going to have a you know ha have an impact for sure. I think where it's really helping us right now is is in the fluidity of our answers, in understanding our customers better and what their particular queries might you know relate to on a personal level. So that additional kind of layer of of insight or personalization. 
And I think as well, it's helping us, um, it's helping us build up a much better overall knowledge base as well. That's the, probably the other part where, where it's kind of, uh, helping us get more and more educated about what's needed in that knowledge base and what our customers need there as well. I do think uh, it is going to help with our service levels. Like we mentioned deflection earlier, if we can, if we can deflect the right queries, then we're obviously getting to those narrowly queries, you know, much, much quicker. And um, so there, there's absolutely a role for, for AI to play there as well. And I also think maybe one of the underestimated parts where it will play a role is just in the upskilling of our support staff because um, support crew are always busy, right? We work in that world. We know the pressure that, that, that the, the support um, the crew are always under. And yet, if we can create an environment where they're answering these complex queries um, more often, they're getting more exposure to it. And then the documentation that we can create to back that up is much stronger as well. I think that's the next area where AI plays a really, really key role too. So I'm kind of looking forward, I think, to what, what it's going to bring in that realm. Yeah. Um, and just with regards to the team working with AI and automation and then your mm -hmm. knowledge base, are they contributing to that strategy or do you have set people in place um, who are taking care of, like, say, knowledge base content creation? Yeah. So it's a, it's a mixture of both, right? Yeah. I think I think what's you know what's key i think as we as we implement roll out and engage with ai is that um our support crew our frontline crew are deeply involved yeah. right and um, i think without that we we run the risk of not being as successful as we might be so so our we we do have dedicated teams dedicated to our kb you know and and making sure that like that's really robust and really strong and they do an incredible job they work really closely then with folks who are designing some of our some of our deflection bots and like like are we well firstly are we deflecting the right things is the quality of our answers correct like you know so we're always getting better there but then also with our frontline staff we we can do a lot of work there around okay what war our customers looking at before they came in to talk to a human? Why didn't they get that answer? And can we enhance the experience through our own support knowledge by sharing that, by helping to build out KB articles, by <coughs> referencing what like for a customer works or doesn't work? You know, just making those and um, that approach much again much more um, intuitive for for our for our um, customers. So I think our, for me, the, you know, having frontline staff or anyone who's really interacting with a customer and um, helping us build these tools is absolutely key to success. We, you know, their engagement in, in ideation, design, rollout, implementation, it's, it's not going to be successful without them. So I think they're a really key part of it. Yeah, completely. Um, like we do something similar here where we have um, folks who they might have like a specialization alongside being a frontline rep yeah. or a frontline engineer and they'll work with content creation or helping with bot flows. And again, that's like that part of making the support role more broad and mm -hmm. um, dealing with more complex topics that are not even just customer facing ones. Yeah. They're to do with like building a strategy for where we're going as a business yeah. and, you know, career pathing wise for people. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I think we, you know, there's this constant flux in a lot of companies around like, is the future better like specialization, generalization, specialization, generalization? And I think, I think with, with AI, we might be able to get the best of both worlds yeah. there for the, for the first time, right? Because, yeah. we, you know, I think at Intercom, maybe we've done the same, we've kind of thrown around which, yeah. which one works best for us, which one works best for our customers, which is the best career path. And I think there's, you know, for me, you know, personally, I think there's a, there's, there's a level of generalization that's terrific to have. And then it's great to have, you know, maybe stripes in your shoulder and some specific areas or whatever. And I think AI will really help us there because there's going to be a lot of content and a lot of help at your fingertips. So even if you're a rep and you're in a human to human interaction, you have all this help, you know, your, your, your co-pilot, whatever you yeah. want to call it, at your side. So even... You know, even with those, um, even where you may not be the absolute expert, you have all this material to, re to rely on and hopefully really great tools that can help you have great conversations. Um, so again, we, you know, whether that be a career path or just like constant skill um, enhancement, really excited about that. That's going to help us with that 
generalization specialist conversation, I think, quite a lot. Yeah, that world of the future for support reps as yeah. well, where their job is so much easier. It's not yeah. just about the customer getting, you know, an AI generated answer. It's about the team being enabled yeah. to do the right thing for the customer. Like at some point, hopefully not use 10,000 tools every time they need to do anything, you Correct. know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even like, I'm curious actually what your team is doing in terms of like, are they using things like um, chat GPT power technology for summarizing mm -hmm. conversation notes or like, is, is there anything like that on your team right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. So we have some tools which are helping with some of our content creation. So like, mm -hmm. so, you know, suggesting and very much suggesting an answer that that uh, is expected to be edited. So, hey, here's the right now we're kind of in the, hey, here's the, here's the rough kind yeah. of the version of yeah. that. So, so a skill that maybe we didn't need up to this point was that ability to to um, curate content and to edit it on the fly, yeah. right? We we never would have really dug into that when, in recruitment or anything like that. And yet now we're thinking that's a, that's a skill that we need, we need to dig into. Like how easy is it to read, adapt and edit content on the fly when you're, when you're talking to a customer? But yeah, what, what, what we're finding is that that content is just way more available. It's just much quicker. It's much easier to get your hands on all these tabs and interfaces that we're used to. If we can reduce those down and just say, you know what, your answer is here. Just, you just need to be, you, maybe the skill is how you ask the question. Maybe the skill is how you edit the content versus knowing which of the 10 tabs to navigate around. And I think, again, something we'll continue to kind of like yeah, focus on and iterate on. Okay, what about the risks? We touched on those a little bit in terms yeah. of like our, our bad interactions with other companies. But mm -hmm. what about like for ourselves as support leaders, um, yeah. like what are you thinking about like risks for your own team um, and your own customers and using AI and how would you advise other teams try and mitigate against that? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, wherever there's great excitement about something like that, there, there's clearly going to be risks, right? And like, if I think really wide picture, like I think a lot of folks are worried about data and privacy and, you know, that, that realm. And I think, you know, we, 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 we need to make sure we're on top of that. I think folks are obviously worried about the, um, you know, answers that are just completely wrong, that just yeah. they serve up incorrect answers. Then when I get more into like maybe closer to my own team, it's kind of okay. If folks are in, like, if my, if, if customers are interacting with AI, firstly, what is that experience like when it comes to like our CSAT scores or whatever? Like, like, yeah, is it enjoyable or does it become very quickly transactional? Because we, we, we want our support to be a differentiator. We pride ourselves on it. And then when it comes down to maybe the team itself, it's kind of related to what we spoke about maybe a few minutes ago. It's like, there's all these new skills. Like, we, 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 we got to help folks grow and adapt to that. Are we going to lose some great people along the way because that's not what they want to do or what they signed up for? Or does the job change so much that like it's not this support role, it's something very, very different? Or if I'm a new hire, like where's all the easy tickets? Like where is this, where where do I cut my teeth anymore when AI takes all these automated, you know, and, and, and road tasks that I used to get, get, you know, build confidence on systems or customers' interactions and things like that. So all of that's a concern. I don't, I don't think those lateral points are like insurmountable, but we have to redesign some of our, like our approach and whether that be our training or our recruitment or whatever, we have to look into that. So I think there's, I think there's risks also around, um, it, AI right now is a wide open landscape. Like what happens if we go down a dirt track versus, you know, taking the main road on this, like, like what happens if, 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 if as a company or if any company just goes the wrong direction with what they're trying to do with their AI. So it's, it's, it's that kind of unknown, I think that's a real risk as well right now. And again, it's the excitement piece, but we got to be cautious as well and make sure we're making the right decisions at the right time. So I think there's a lot to keep us grounded while we kind of try and force ahead with some level of, of, of excitement and pace as well. Yeah. And a lot of those are new challenges, you know, yeah. so there's not like a run book or lots of podcasts you can listen to or books yeah. you can read on how to solve these because we're like still figuring, like you and I are figuring it out yeah. right now as we're talking about it. And, and absolutely. And I think sometimes like the solutions you might have in Intercom are terrific. If I was to implement the same, yeah. it might it might work, right? Yeah. You know, um, or it might be, you know, yeah, terrific, works perfectly, great. Um, but 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 maybe then I I I just you know it's it's not um something we can keep going with. There's there's other challenges within the company. It's not sustainable. So I think it's uh it's such new ground. Um, that's that's definitely something we're all worried about. So you know, you mentioned around like you know a couple of years ago 
the, the, the role you're in now did not exist like um what happens in a couple of years time what does that look like so i think it's yeah it's 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 frightening it's exciting it's uh this terrific opportunity um we just got to step through it cautiously yeah absolutely like another risk um you mentioned it earlier around deflection like mm -hmm. what does that even mean when i think of that that word um, we started to try and speak in terms of like resolution, like automated resolution yes. at Intercom. Yes. We can still see deflection, but there's actually a gap between how we measure those two things. Um, the deflection side of things, like the difference between deflection and resolution mm -hmm. is often like abandoned, right? And abandoned isn't good. Yeah, um, yeah. So a com customer usually has gotten sick of it and has just gone away. And like def that, that piece that you spoke about where like if you deflect something, has the customer just gone away? Mm -hmm. and have you actually lost that business? Yeah more than actually like, you know, what you saved and not having to deal with the support requests. So like, that's a risk that's on my mind yeah. as well, on top of what you've already spoken about. Yeah. And, for, and from a customer perspective, like it, it's so true. Like, like we, as I mentioned, we, we like, you know, HubSpot for us, our support is a differentiator. We're really proud of it. What if, you know, over, over time that like people's impression of support is just a chatbot, just yeah. like that's it. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that we, whatever we put in front of the customer, chatbot wise, is X, it's just superb. It's also a differentiator. And then as I've mentioned a few times, then it's like when the human support is there, that it too is like top of the game, that it's a differentiator. Um, because I think that connection is, is, is going to continue to be key in the years ahead. That's It seems to be that's what people really want now. Um, is that connection, connection with the, you know, the business that they're doing, connection with the, the companies that they're working with and connection with this, maybe the support crew that they're working with as well. Yeah, it is about that end to end customer journey, right? Mm -hmm. The experience from the moment they need help, yeah. go looking for it, where they search, do they have to ask a question? Can they find the answer by themselves? Yeah. And like a customer, like when I think about, say, customer success versus customer support and how mm -hmm. like in some companies it's the same thing, it's yeah. the same team. In other companies, it's like different, you know, um, and that world getting more blended because, again, a customer doesn't care who they're talking to at a company. Like sure. they just want help. Right. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah. And if there's like different processes and different teams. So like, do you see a world like that where support and success is more blended in the future because of the advancements in AI? Yeah, I think um, I think it potentially I think there's two ways maybe or two roads of going down. One is that the two teams become more blended, yeah. right? And they, they literally and physically become more blended. I think the other way um, that might happen a little bit quicker is that the information that they're using is is the same, yes. right? Because yeah. right now, I don't know about you, but there's, you know, and, and, and not, not just in HubSpot, but in other companies I've worked in, there's always been that like a slight disconnect between, okay, like, in support, we see one thing about the customer, but there's lots of other information that's hard to get or it's a systems thing or it's whatever, it's a relationship thing. So I think where there might be room for, for a lot of success is, let's say the, our view of the customer was just shared and all the information and the knowledge and the insights was easily accessible by whoever was talking to the customer. It just creates such a strong bond between maybe support and maybe a CSM or, you know, a, 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 any other, anybody else working in, in, in within the success team. And ultimately that's a successful customer, which is what we all want, right? So even if, you know, traditionally support's role has been like, kind of fix a problem and get out of the way, let the person get back to work, right? Maybe now, because there's, because they're, you know, we're focusing on deeper problems or we have time to have that conversation, we're looking into complexity, that we're able to like kind of seamlessly um, work with the customer. And to your point, they don't know, like it's no, no different if they're working with support or a CSM, like the knowledge, the information, the insight is there, the personalization is there. So maybe eventually that leads into like, yeah, physically they're the same team. But I think initially there's just that information piece is, is where I see real, real possibility. Yeah. And that like the automated journey is just as smooth, mm -hmm. you know, so from the moment they go yeah. through an automated flow to a human, to the next human team, um, that all of that is just like a beautiful end to end experience. Precisely. Can't say that's always the case <laughs> yeah. today. We're getting there. Yeah. And that's um, what we're all striving for. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's as a customer or as someone serving a customer, that's what you want them to feel. Yeah. Yeah. What about um, quality control then? You know, we spoke a little bit about customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm thinking of that piece where CSAT is so classically the customer support yep. team. 
it's like a human's interaction, uh, close off the case or the ticket or the conversation, mm -hmm. whatever term you want to use. Um, customers asked to rate the person they dealt with and usually like maybe rate the company as well. Yeah. And that's like the team CSAT. But like, how do you see that changing in a world of AI? Yeah. Yeah. I think. I and, think and QA actually, like and, quality control. Yeah. yeah. So, so on the CSAT piece, I think, um, I think there's a lot of like um, data and information out there to say that a person, how, how a customer scores their interaction is often based on like, you know, the, the, almost the, the, the personality of the individual they're dealing with or the, or the customer's personality and how that connection works, right? So there's, there's, there's a lot of times where like uh, a resolution is reached, but maybe it's a bit bumpy or maybe like there isn't a connect between two and maybe a, a CSAT has scored as a seven rather than a nine and, and vice versa. Sometimes like the CSAT is a little bit um, enhanced or, 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 or um, bloated because it's down to the it's down to the relationship that people have and the interaction. It's just like interesting, right? And we allow for that in our numbers and things, but there's there's a there's a level of error there that is interesting. I think when if you're interacting with a bot, it becomes far more binary about like, I came in here to get an answer, I got the answer, I'm I'm done, right? And um, so I think what we'll probably end up seeing when there's enough data. A kind of a, I think we'll see a far more black and white version of like, let's say, bot driven CSAT. And then the human driven will probably continue to be about the connection and the conversation as well as the, the outcome. So we may have to have a look at like, you know, what does that mean for targets and metrics or even the methodology of how we're doing things? Like, I'm, I, I don't know if like how worthwhile a CSAT will be in the long run when it comes to our bot interactions. Um, uh, and I mean that in the sense of like, will it help us build better? Or are we going to get that just from our own QA and from like sense checking? Okay, what are the answers this bot is giving to this individual? Like, is it way off? What's happening here? So, I mean, I think we, I think we're we'll, we're going to end up in a in an era in a place where we will need some level of methodology that speaks to a bot interaction versus a human interaction. And CSAT's worked well for a long time. Um, but maybe in the bot front, we're, we're going to end up somewhere different. Yeah, we've been trying to, you know, figure out our longer term strategy for, again, like that end to end piece, yeah. like not just the human, the the QA of the human and how they interacted with the customer. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, yeah, again, from the moment the customer tried to get in touch with us till yeah. they were not speaking with us anymore. Like, how was that entire yeah. flow between like processes, automation? Yes, the human piece as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's not an easy one just to like flick a switch and be like, now I QA everything. That's it. It, yeah. it, it. it really isn't. And the other, like the traditional challenge that we'll continue to have is that um, customer like, hey, nine sees that everything is great. And if we do our own internal QA, we're yes. going, oh, that's not, yeah. you know, it's like, and it's, uh, there's always going to be that imbalance and imperfection. But again, they're, they're, they're kind of like opportunities, I think, to learn and to build better as well. So you know, I don't think we'll eradicate that difference because what a customer wants is that experience. And probably what we're looking for internally is a combination of experience and terrifically correct answers, right? And yeah. um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be an ongoing, uh, an ongoing battle, I think, to, to get that balance right. Yeah. On the correct answer piece for the bots in particular, mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you have a similar process where like you're feeding content to your AI bot via a knowledge base. Yeah. So same as like how Finn works yeah. for us. Um, can you tell me a bit more about the the content side of things? You know, you mentioned like the reps are helping out, you have some content managers, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, like any more challenges there or anything you're, you're planning for the future and investment there? Yeah, I, I think really the plan for the future is to make that KB more and more and more robust, or, you know, just making sure that it it what we have there is is right that there is you know there are no um answers that are that are incorrect but maybe more so that there's probably a level we get to where you know we continue to personalize as much as possible um, and i think where we we we'd, we'd love to be is a place where our kb you know it is maybe an element of our success is like how deep is the knowledge in our kb are we improving that KB knowledge all the time? But maybe more so, are our customers engaging with it in a really meaningful way all the time too? So the, the, the KB is clearly key to success of, of AI um, and like will be. So it's really reliant on that KB 
KB being incredibly robust. So we'll continue to have our content managers look at that. We'll continue to get feedback from, from our front, front line on that. But also, like, you know, clearly we can tie up like our, our customers, like CSAF response with, um, you know, hey, a 10 out of 10 or a 1 out of 10, it's an incorrect answer. Great. Let's see what happened there and fix that as well. But it's it's the old, I guess it's the oldest kind of trick in the book, if you like, where if our KB content is superb, then we have a much better chance of having really great answers coming yeah. through our, our, our AI but it's a constant, like things are changing all the time. So it's it's not just about fixing what's there. It's about keeping it up to date. It's about moving with new releases. It's about, you know, questions that might, you know, in the in the graph, they slowly spike up and our answers need to be better and stronger and more accessible. So there's a lot. It's more than just maintaining what's there. It's a constant evolution of that KB. Yeah. And it's a lot of, like, it's a resource, yeah. it's a big resource train, you know, yeah. continuously keeping everything up to date there. Mm. Um, is it just the support team who own the knowledge base um, or do you have any interactions, you know, with say like the R&D teams, do they in, um, help with that too? It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's our support team. So our KB team sits within our, our, our support organisation, which makes makes a ton of sense right now. And we can, they would work closely with like a lot of like cross-functionally now more than ever, I'm going to say, as we're kind of like looking down the, you know, looking down the, the AI route, a lot of cross-functional work going on because clearly, you know, to set up anything like any any even of the, the more simple bots, we need a level of that kind of cross-functional. So so yes, like a lot of uh, cross-functional um, work going on, but that kind of KB is is owned within our our support team um, right now. And uh, yeah, with we, we, we'll kind of I, I guess evolution wise, we'll see what way that goes. But right now, it makes a ton of sense for 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 it to sit there. Yeah. Um... What about other types of businesses? So, you know, we both work in like tech, yeah. SaaS, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the setup of our companies, even though Intercom is a good bit smaller than HubSpot, right? Like yeah. the setup and kind of structure would probably be broadly similar. Um, what sort of industries or types of businesses do you think like might not have the same resourcing that we yeah, do or like yeah, have to use yeah. AI in a different way, have a really small support team compared to what we would have? Like, yeah, what are yeah. your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think there's opportunity for everybody, right? So regardless of how like big or small, like I think there's opportunity in, in the AI world. And I think if I, you know, if, if I was looking at a very small support team, I'd still be excited by the opportunities. But what I'd also be kind of thinking is, OK, let's 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 start this small, like and even within probably within Intercom, within HubSpot. It is about starting and iterating. And I, I think small companies can do that, too. I think the key and we kind of touched on this is like, first off, it's like educate your bot on like the material that you have, your KB or your, 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 your white docs, whatever, and then build from that right because like that piece like I'm making it sound really simple I know there's work behind it but that's the that's the the, the starting point you just educate maybe an initial bot to answer some some queries get that right build iterate build iterate and no matter how small you are I think there's opportunity there right so okay you identify maybe there's some a small number of tasks that you that are all that can be quickly automated great keep building keep building because what you're doing all the time is creating this additional space for your support team and maybe there's small companies out there right now that will grow to be huge and they'll, they'll maybe never have to go through that stage of all those all you know lots of people doing lots of automated like um tasks or what could be automated tasks maybe they'll get the opportunity for the support team to grow in a very different way and um, so again like it's it's like blank canvas but I wouldn't let the size of a small support team put me off um, investing and thinking about AI because it can still be done in very straightforward, and very simple ways. But I think if I was to start, it would probably be just on what have you got there that you can start to train bots and you've got to have some documentation, even if it's rough and ready, start there and then iterate after that. Yeah, like do you ever look back on some of the things, you know, that you're like doing massive cleanup for now? And think if I went back a couple of years and just sorted that out back then, because, you know, that back yeah. then you were like, we can't, we don't have time. We, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, how you would put a sticky plaster in that and yeah. we'll piece that together with a with, 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 with some Lego and, a, and a, a paper clip or something for sure. I mean, that, you know, and, and, you know, maybe we'll never, I don't know if we'll ever get rid of that. But I think um, 
I think people should be looking and thinking deeply about that. It's like, you know, that, that short-term fix now ends up becoming a process and a policy that's deeply embedded. And eventually when we try and pull it out, things collapse, right? So I think, you know, yeah, if, if as a small support team, if you can avoid that kind of stuff, it's terrific. But I said, sometimes it's like, it's an urgency versus a, a great design um, is, is the compromise that you have. Um, but it's just, I just think just right now, if I was like starting off in a small support team, I'd be really excited by AI because it it, it is probably creating space for me to build a, a really quickly, a really uh, functioning and capable support team focusing on the right things versus focusing on those things that aren't adding real value, but still have to be done. Yeah. And like the difference between now and say those few years ago is that the technology and the tools yeah. exist bigger, mm -hmm. better, more impressive, you yeah. know, and really can do so much that they couldn't do before. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. for uh, I guess any smaller teams, if I was the same as yourself, if I was to set up a smaller support team now, invest in that AI yep. and automation strategy early and hopefully that will yeah. save like a whole world of pain later For sure. on. sure. Like, like, you know, I remember like, I'm old enough to remember like, you know, when, when mobile phones were like suddenly were in everyone's hand, right? And there was this move to, you know, the buzz, mobile first, mobile first. And you're going, great, like, what does it mean? And we everybody got there. But then there was a bunch of companies who just skipped over the web browser and just went straight to mobile. And that was so impressive. Like they just like, just just skipped over one, just completely missed the hurdle and went, OK, we're, we're a mobile platform. You're going, OK, you've just cut out a load of work for yourself yeah. and a load of evolution. And like that, that just works so well for a lot of companies. And I think in time, that might be where we'll get with some of this kind of AI stuff will be, well, actually, all this other stuff that like a lot of companies have spent years growing pains on. We're not doing it. We're just we're just jumping straight ahead. So there's some great opportunities there for 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 some companies. Nice. We're selling the dream. <laughs> um, so for you, what's next? Any big plans for the rest of this year or into next year? Yeah, I think um, yeah, we're we're like personally, we're deep in planning season. We're plotting plotting uh, world domination um, from next year onwards. But I think um, I, I love this time of the year because it is our planning season in HubSpot. We do a lot of deep thinking. We throw out a lot of ideas and we roll our eyes at some of them. We kind of latch on to some of them. And um, it's just a it's just a really exciting time of the year because there's a lot of like really smart people in HubSpot and some just terrific ideas come up, right? And as I said, some of them stick and we'll really run with them and others will we'll park and others will say, well, like, that's not for us. I think then for, for you know, for like closing out this year, looking into next year, we want to finish the year strong. It's been, you know, it's been it's like a lot of SaaS companies. It's been a challenging year. We've, um, we've had a lot of thrown at us this year, but the team have like bounced through it. So I want to try and make sure that we finish out the year just strong, um, in a good place from a morale point of view, but also from a like looking ahead point of view as well, like really looking out there and thinking th th there's there's a transformative change on the way. Let's get ready for it. Let's embrace it and let's like be excited by it. It's nervy, yeah, but like let's lean into the excitement and really, really get into it. So it's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Nice. Um, and lastly, where can people go to keep up with your work and HubSpot's work? Hey, um, they can join me on a long run at any time they want. Um, you know, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll bend the rear on what's happening with HubSpot. But look, if you want to see what's happening, jump onto, uh, jump onto um, our blog. Like all of our latest and greatest is up there. Um, lots of like updates and um, uh, yeah, what's happening in, in, in all spheres of HubSpot. Personally, hit me up on LinkedIn. That's where, that's where I'm most present um, and delighted to connect and hear people's stories Yeah, as well. So Yeah, that's yeah. where I hassled you to come and join us here <laughs> anyway. Um, Noel, thank you very much for joining us. It's been great to hear from you. It's been a pleasure and you've been a great host. Thank you thank very you. much. <laughs>